Plants need nutrients, water, air, and sunlight to grow. Plants get their nutritional needs from minerals in the soil or the water they live in. Roots take up the water and nutrients from soil and they are then transported to the leaves. It is in the leaves that the process of photosynthesis occurs. Since plants are found in almost every type of environment on this planet, the basic needs of plants are met in a huge variety of ways, and plants have developed a wide range of adaptations to allow them to fully utilize light and water resources wherever they grow. Do plants need light to survive and thrive, and under what light conditions do plants grow best? This is, can plants survive without light? You most likely have learned and experienced that animals and plants have basic needs to ensure survival. These include food, water, air, and space to grow and thrive. But what about light? In this experiment, you will investigate how plants react to various light levels. To do this, you will use a light sensor to measure the ambient light in three different locations over a period of time. Ambient light refers to natural light, either outdoors or coming in through a window. This includes artificial lights, like those in your classroom and at home. Okay, there's a couple ways you can set up this experiment. The initial things that you're definitely going to need are, of course, your SparkView software, your light sensor, a measuring device, and then you're going to want a form of artificial light. I am using um, just a basic side lamp that I have. I'm going to put it in a darker area of the classroom. Uh, it's something that you're going to want to turn off in the evenings before you leave. And I'm using an LED light bulb because incandescent light bulbs give off a lot of heat. And we're investigating how light affects the plants, not the temperature. For the plants themselves, this is something that's really important. Uh, right now, I have three of the same kind of plant that are the same height. They're in the same type of soil and even in the same containers. And I made sure to label them A, B, and C so I know which location each is going to go. One is going to go in a windowsill. One is going to go in artificial light. And the other we're going to put in a dark environment. You can either put it in a cupboard or simply take a box and cover up the plant. The sample data that you're gonna be able to locate or have access to is going to have information related to plants that I actually germinated. So I used tomato plants and I made sure they germinated and sprouted. And once they were uh, about five centimeters in height, that's when I began my investigation. So again, two ways you can do it. You can germinate your own plants, uh, use something that grows fast like tomato or bean seeds, or you just go and get three plants that are the same type and the same size. And that's your setup. Okay, so now we're gonna start data collection. But before I start recording any of my data, it's really important that my plants are in the three specified locations they need to be for the duration of this experiment. Uh, for my experiment, it went for about two weeks. It could vary for you. It could be a week, it could be three weeks. So you're gonna put one plant by a windowsill or a natural light source in your classroom or at home. Uh, then your second plant is going to be uh, in a dark area. And again, you can either put it in a cabinet or you could cover it with a box. And then your final plant will be the one that you use for your artificial light. So I have all my plants where they need to be. Let's talk about the light sensor itself. All right, so I'm in SparkView and I have connected my light sensor and I chose sensor data. From here, you're gonna see ambient light sensor and spotlight sensor. The spotlight sensor's in the front here, and then I can see my ambient light sensor is on the back. I am gonna disable the spotlight sensor because you won't need that, and uh, you're gonna wanna make sure uh, luminance is the one that you have checked off. That's the measurement you're gonna be collecting in Lux. And I'm gonna choose the digits display. So when you are collecting, uh, your light samples, it's really important to remember where you've held your light sensor each day um, and trying to keep it in the same location the best that you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. This is just an example because the lights in here are really, really bright in our video room and I've got it facing the plant 
and I'm going to click stop. It will move on you a lot, but don't worry about that. It stays within a pretty close range. And I've got 986 lux. That's what you're going to record in your data table along with measuring the height of your plant. So that's the basics of your data collection. So let's talk a little bit about data analysis. Uh, again, this is an activity that you are going to be doing over a length of time, whether it be a week, two weeks, three weeks. It's really important that you are recording the proper measurements in your data table that are going to include the height of the plant, uh, also the lux, the ambient light around that plant, and then also you're going to want to write down observations that you notice of the plant itself. So those are three key pieces that you're going to want to collect. Once you've collected your data over your period of time, between that and the introduction of this video, you should have everything you need to answer the questions that are found at the bottom of your activity sheet. Good luck.